This video uses Taylor series to justify an amazing formula. We've seen that the Maclaurin series for e to the x, that is, the Taylor series centered at zero, is given by this formula. So if we want the Maclaurin series for e to the i x, we can just substitute in i x for x. If you're not familiar with the math symbol i, it represents the square root of negative 1, an imaginary number. It has the properties that i squared is negative 1, i cubed, which is i squared times i, is negative 1 times i, or negative i, and i to the fourth, which is i cubed times i, is going to be negative i times i, which is negative i squared, which is negative negative 1, which works out to 1. If we continue like this, we'll see that i to the fifth, which is i to the fourth times i, is 1 times i, or i, i to the sixth is negative 1 again, i to the seventh is negative i, and i to the eighth is 1, using similar computations. And the pattern repeats with this length or cycle, going from i to negative 1 to negative i to 1 and back to i again. Now you might be wondering, what does e to the ix even mean? How can you take e to an imaginary number times a real number? But I'm going to ask you to set aside your disbelief for a moment and just work out what this series simplifies to. The first term, when n equals 0, is just going to be 1. The next term, when n equals 1, is going to be ix over 1 factorial. Then we have ix squared over 2 factorial ix cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. That can be rewritten as 1 plus ix plus i squared x squared over 2 factorial plus i cubed x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. Now let's use the patterns we found for powers of i. Since i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, i to the fourth is 1, and so on, we can rewrite this series. So here we are, we've written all our powers of i in terms of 1i, negative 1, and negative i. Now let's look separately at the terms with even powers of x, including the constant term, which we'll think of as a 0 power of x. And then separately, we'll look at terms with the odd powers of x. Notice that the even powers of x never have any i's in them, and the odd powers of x terms always have a factor of i. Furthermore, the terms with even powers of x circled in purple form exactly the terms of the Taylor series for cosine x, while the green terms form exactly i times the terms of the Taylor series for sine of x. This gives us the amazing formula that e to the i x is equal to cosine of x plus i times sine x. This is known as Euler's formula. So I'm going to show you a couple of applications of Euler's formula, the fact that e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x in the sense that the power series of both sides of the equation are equal. The first application is finding the value of e to the i pi. Well, according to Euler's, Euler's formula, this is equal to cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. In other words, it's equal to negative 1 plus i times 0, or negative 1. This gives the famous formula e to the i pi equals negative 1, a formula that connects three fundamental constants of mathematics. Amazingly, or this formula, e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x, can even be used to prove trig identities. Let's see how it can be used to prove this angle sum formulas. So let me take e to the i, a plus b. By Euler's formula, that's cosine of a plus b plus i sine of a plus b. But I can also write e to the i, a plus b as e to the i a plus i b, and by exponent rules, that's the same thing as e to the i a times e to the i b. 
If I now apply Euler's formula twice, once to e to the i a and once to e to the i b, I get a product of cosine a plus i sine a and cosine b plus i sine b. So I have, on the one hand, e to the i times a plus b is equal to this expression. On the other hand, it's equal to that expression. So let me set those two expressions equal to each other. And now I'm going to distribute the right side. So I get cosine a cosine b plus i times cosine a sine b plus i times sine a cosine b. And then finally, with these last two terms, I get i squared sine a sine b. But remember that i squared is negative 1, so I can rewrite the i squared that way. Let me group my terms, the ones that have i's in them and the ones that don't. Now check this out. The term without the i in it on the left side and the term without the i in it on the right side need to be equal. And the term with the i in it on the left side and the term with the i in it on the right side need to be equal. But that means that cosine of a plus b is equal to cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b and sine of a plus b is equal to cosine a sine b plus sine a cosine b and up to a little bit of rearranging that's exactly the angle sum formulas. Wow! Taylor series can be used to find this amazing formula e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x, which can in turn be used to do other amazing things.